Okay, cool. Um, all right, so I guess the first thing on the agenda is that um, I added some work items to our ongoing projects tracking issue. It looks like everybody's aware of that because people started to pick work off of that. But um, if there's anything on there you're interested in, um, either I can probably answer some questions about it or Felix can, or we can certainly point you to somebody who can. So um, definitely get in touch and let us know if you wanna work on any of that stuff. Um, Santiago, did you wanna talk about your PR or <clears throat> you want yep. me to talk about that? I don't know, like if you want, <laughs> Would be easier probably for you to, to explain this. Okay. Um, so Santiago has been working on uh, one of the linked issues to uh, reduce how much um, inline, how many inline function instantiations we're getting in debug builds because we don't actually run the inliner or any of the optimizations that need multiple copies in the same crate, like per CGU. Um, so we're just, we're just adding compilation time there. So, um, the overall issue is actually to do some additional work beyond what's been done now to, <clears throat> um, to generate a copy of the inline function in the upstream crate, even in release mode so that we can link against it potentially in a downstream crate. Um, that hasn't been done yet, but what Santiago has done is push up a PR that changes um, our uh, instantiation strategy basically for inline functions in debug mode. So now we get just one copy per crate instead of potentially one copy per CGU that uses it. Um, and we did a perf run on that and the results were a little mixed. Um, there were some regressions up to like almost 6% on um, some of the incremental tests, but we also got a 35% improvement on full non-incremental build for regex and I think a 13% improvement on the full build for encoding in debug mode, which uh, seemed like pretty significant wins to me. Um, so. I'm feeling like we should probably land this because this seems like the correct strategy, even if there's some crates or some situations that this doesn't um, so, help. So as, as far as I can tell, this, this only changes when, when in line is always. The, the rest is kind of the same behavior we had before. The, the only thing that I was wondering is um, related to, like if, if you expand a bit the code above of, of, of the changes that are in the, in the part that it says in, in line always and all that, we we were we were using um, I mean we are using this in line in all ZGU's option. Uh, I guess if some if somebody pass pass that flag as true or something like that, we should always because it's, it's what what the user is, is really suggesting right It's asking you to do. So <clears throat> in that case, like um, well, if some if someone sets that to true. Like uh, we would be, I mean, what, what I don't know, this is like a, how, how the code previous, previously behaved, but um, I don't know why, like um, in, the, in the top part of the, of the code, when right before the mono item FN arm, like we're we are doing some checks there and returning instantiation mode globally shared, regardless if that is true or not. So I, I, I mean, I don't know if that's, what the code should be doing, but uh, it, it's a pre-existing thing, what, what I'm mentioning. Um. But, but it's, in, in some case, it's, it seems to me that, that we, would, we would want, if, if in line in all CGUs is true, just like returning sensation more local copy or something like that is what, what I would guess we should be doing, but. Uh, or even just switch like the, I don't know, it's, it's hard to <laughs> explain what code I'm referring to like uh, in the air, but. Uh, yeah, you know, so if, if I think what you're saying is maybe we could <clears throat> um, reorganize that branch there. Cause I think if 
generate I'm, some I'm just, external copies is true. We probably want it to do local copy. All right. Time. So, so yeah. I, I, what I'm saying is to move the line, the, the code we have from line 95 and switch it to, to what we have in line 105, like to switch those, those things so we can just return quickly if generates like uh, if in line in OCGUs is true because it seems that, that that's what we want but uh, I don't know like maybe anyway we can continue with this async yeah that might be a good to clean up um, I'm a little curious what generates CGU internal copies on the def does I'm not sure it's the same as our variable up top generate CGU internal copies um, it may have something to do with like what annotations are applied to this specific item or what kind of item it is or something. So I'm not, I'm not sure offhand if we can do that, but that does seem like a reasonable cleanup. So Okay. Um, uh, David, if I understood you correctly, when we were um, talking about follow up uh, things to do with this, what we really want is like right now, um, like right now when we when we don't when when we are not going to to inline our code, we want just to like reuse or refer in some way to what what another crate ha have generated, right? But um, what I wonder in in the actual code, what we want is is to not generate this instantiation mode copies. Um, it, it's just that and and refer in some other way what what the other crate have or. Yeah, so um, I think what we want to do to actually close out this ticket entirely is in debug mode. Um, well, so backing up for the upstream crate, we need to actually generate a copy of that function in that crate so that we can link against it. Right. And then downstream in debug mode, instead of generating any copies of that function, in our crate, in any of our CGUs, we just want to link against the upstream copy. But right now, there's no upstream copy at all because it's marked in line. So, uh, Felix, we're talking about the um, PR Santiago opened for seven six eight nine six, um, okay. and the TLDR is that basically it changes the uh, instantiation mode for inline always functions in debug mode. It's so that instead of generating a copy per CGU that uses it, we generate one copy in our crate and reuse it across all CGUs because obviously we're not running optimizations in LLVM, so it doesn't matter. Um, we did a perf run. There's some regressions mostly on different incremental performance tests up to 6% in some cases. There's also a 35% improvement on the regex debug build in the full case and a 13% improvement in the encoding debug full case as well. So when you say inline all, so inline always, I'm, I'm assuming there's no, even no language guarantee there that we actually inline, um, but I don't know that for sure. Even though I just remember offhand. That's what we're talking about, right? It's like actually yeah. treating it like it's not truly always. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I, I'm not sure if there's documentation to this effect. What I've always heard is that all of the inline attributes are suggestions, not guarantees. Certainly without always. Certainly without always, it's a suggestion that's just, you know, that's what we have to the compiler. But I'm curious about always now. Okay, this is interesting. Um, so my feeling was that we should probably, maybe there's some tweaks we can do or something to this somewhere to recoup some of the lost performance on some of the incremental tests. Um, or maybe we should dig into those some more and figure out exactly what's going on there. But um, a 35% improvement on an actual crate in non-incremental seems pretty significant. And the change makes sense logically. So we should probably look at taking it. So um, sure. Wesley, like the like high level, like I understood what you said, uh, like what we want to accomplish, but um, it seemed to me, like I, I, I'm not sure because I don't like know exactly uh, the code, what, what's going on, um, but uh, it seemed to me from what I 
from what I have test that uh, just by by doing this change, we are like uh, we are really um, doing what 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 you are saying. Like I mean, um, from the from the main crate, we are making a copy and we are referring from the other one. But I, I don't know. I may be a bit confused, but um, like it, it seemed to me that we are really with this. We are really doing what what we are what the the ticket like asked to do. So I, I'm not really sure. Um, like maybe there's. I think we've got. I think we've got a good chunk of it. Um, so part of it is just generating fewer copies, and part of it is generating copies upstream so that we don't have to generate any copies in our crate at all. Because right now we're still generating one copy that we're sharing across all of our CGUs. Um, and if we look at the ticket, um, uh, Michael said we could probably make use of this dash C share generics infrastructure for making inline functions available downstream. Um, and then the, the comment that actually spawned this ticket is kind of talking about that same idea where if we actually generate a function in the upstream crate, we can link against it in the downstream crate without any duplication at all there. Um, so this is definitely like a big chunk of it, but there's there's probably still more work that needs to be done there to close it out. Okay, yeah, we, we can continue discussing async and with concrete, like more concrete uh, yeah. pointers to the code and all that, I, like, uh, yeah. Um, okay. Uh, David, do you wanna talk about um, what you've been working on? Sure, I don't know there's a massive amount to say, but I've been looking at the ticket to add split dwarf support I expect there'll be a reasonable chunk of work to do there because it's different across platforms. But what I've done so far is look into what Clang is doing. So I've kind of written up all of Clang's stuff um, and I can share that in the, the Zulu stream um, and see what it's doing, finding out what differences asking for Split Dwarf makes to the calls to LVM so that I can replicate that in what Rusty does. So I've figured that out, I think. I've now been looking at the our wrapper functions um, to LVM. I've modified those so that will be able to pass along the information that we'll need. And I'm now adding a flag so I can try and wire it all up. And I'll see if that works. Cool. Cool. Um, do you know like how how well supported is this like LLVM? Do you think we're gonna get much platform support out of the box, or are we going to have to like special case? Um, I'm not sure. Um, the, there was a couple. Um, Clang was special casing it so that it would only do it when the target output elf or wasm. Um, and then there was also some special casing for GNU and MingW, but I, that seemed slightly unrelated, even though it did use the same flags. So there's some, I'll need to look into it a bit more, but I think we'll get Linux at least. Okay. Are we, I use Windows, but I don't really use Windows for REST stuff. So I, I'm speaking out of ignorance here, but at least in .NET world, <laughs> debug info is split, like just out of the box mm -hmm. from DLLs. Does anyone know if like that's already happening on Windows or do we have to do something special to get split debug to work on Windows. Regular Windows MSVC. Not sure. Okay. I'd be kind of interested if that's like already happening because I that Should sort of feels like the it. platform default. But you just mean that the debug the, the debug metadata is in a separate file? Was yeah. That, I'm pretty sure that's what happens, but yeah, we should check. All right, cool. Um, so that's everything on the agenda. Uh, is there anything else anybody wants to talk about? Nope. Okay. We, oh, uh, that, I, obviously this is the beginning of the meeting, but we, there is one thing I was thinking about. Um, we probably, 
I probably didn't, I, I know I didn't do enough to try to elicit um, new volunteers, but something we probably should think about perhaps because we did see some attrition, um, obviously. Um, there's plenty of work to do. But it's not something I've been thinking about too hard, obviously. Um, so now that I'm thinking about it, actually, I think there's still a PR that we got CC'd on uh, that we should look at from, uh, check my notifications. Okay, yeah, the lazy decoding of death path table during incremental compilation PR, I think, is waiting on us or somebody from the incremental compilation group to do a review. Um, I will post a link in the meeting notes. Okay. Is there anything else anybody wants to talk about? Nope. Okay. Um, so we are trying to hold scheduled meetings. So assuming this time works for everyone, uh, I guess we'll see everybody back here again in two weeks. Right, yeah. Yeah. Cool. Okay. All right. Bye. Bye. Bye everyone.